Good morning, my name is Bob Kaufman. This is my co-teacher Trey Clark and these are the students of Radio Broadcasting and Journalism One. And we're at the ACE Center at Highland Springs. And this morning we're going to talk about story ideas. But before we get into story ideas, I want to talk about just briefly what makes news news and the five things that we look at that make a story newsworthy. So let's begin with the, probably the most important one and that's impact. So what does impact mean to you? Anybody? Isaiah? Yeah, impact is how it affects your day-to-day -day life. So weather, impact, how you dress, how you travel, what you're going to do during that day. Uh, the second uh, news value or news judgment is called proximity. What does proximity mean to you? Right, a news story that is relevant in the Richmond area is not necessarily a news story that is relevant in other parts of the world, uh, or even the country, or even sometimes the state. You know, for example, one of the stories we're going to talk about today is how Highland Springs did the three-peat. Now, while that's a big story here, I'm sure the people in Loudoun County don't want to hear about it, because that's where the team they beat is from. Uh, the next we want to talk about is prominence. Can somebody define prominence for me? Right, sometimes news is newsworthy because of who it happens to. Okay, if, you know, I do something out in public, it might not make the news. But if Donald Trump does something, the same thing out in public, that might be newsworthy. So who it happens to often dictates whether it is news or not. The next is conflict. Who wants to talk about conflict? Go ahead. Yeah, problem between either two countries, two people, two groups, or even a conflict within one own self uh, can be newsworthy. And the last we're going to talk about is human interest. Somebody want to tell me what human interest is? Go ahead. It could be a new discovery, or it could be a story that just kind of warms our heart. Something that's a little unusual, maybe, might be a human interest story. A dog that gets lost and then three years later finds its way cross-country and finds its owner again is newsworthy because it is uh, of human interest. So, what makes a story a story then? How do you even begin a story? Well, let me just tell you that the first thing you want to think about is whether the news story has the hmm to it. And basically what that means is, will it garner anybody's interest? Does anybody really care? Let's talk about a news story that's in the news this morning. And that is the story of uh, generators, home generators, that are being recalled because they're a fire hazard. So, what I want you to do on your whiteboards is write down which one of these news judgments pertain to this story. And by the way, while you're doing that, let me explain today is an analog Monday. We're doing everything old school. There'll be no computers, there'll be no projectors, no phones, no internet. We're going to do things the way they used to do it back in the day when I started teaching, which I'm not going to tell you when that was but I'm sure maybe my co-teacher might chime in on that. So, thousands of generators were recalled due to a fire hazard. So, as soon as you have written down what news judgment that falls under, lift it up. Lift them up. Here we go. Prominence. Really? Why would it be prominent? Because, like, it's, it's a hazard that someone in the first fire. It might be human interest. How, how would this be a human interest story? Okay, I like impact. Why is this impactful? Yeah, because of the effect it could have. And I see a lot of people have impact. And by far, impact would be the top news judgment here. But like any story, you could take, you can put them down. Like any story, you can take this in a lot of different directions. For example, if you were going to use a, a story that led with proximity, how would you, what would that story be about? Okay, so you have the, the, the generator that's exploding, and you have, you want to base your story based on it being local. What's the story about? Anybody? Say that again? Yeah, a house that burnt down on Nine Mile Road because of a generator. Human interest story might be, you know, a, a, uh, a fire that happened and a man runs back in and saves his little kitty cat. 
So that could be a story that deals with human interest also. So you have to decide whether it passes the hmm test. Are you going to be curious about it? That's the first thing. And is your audience going to be curious about it? The second thing that's really important when it comes to a story idea is who is the story for? Okay? If your audience are people 12 to 18 years old, is that generator going to be a story? Not so much because I don't know too many 16-year-olds out buying generators. But if you're a homeowner, you're 25 to 49, then that story might have more impact on you. So there has to be a natural curiosity to it. Or maybe an idea that, uh, that starts as a little observation and turns into a big idea. For example, let's take a look at the story. What happened over the weekend? What happened Friday night into Saturday? It snowed. And I personally think a Friday night snow is a little bit of a waste. Could have been a Monday night snow. Would have been more impactful to us. But the Friday night snow caused something to happen. Because it was a very wet snow, uh, a lot of power lines went out. Matter of fact, at one point, I think the news said there was over 8,000 people without power. And still this morning, there are thousands without power, which means they went through 20s and 30 temperatures without any power. Write down what you think is the news value, the news judgment for that story, the fact that people are still without power. Is it impact, prominence, proximity, conflict, human interest? Maybe more than one. So write them in the order of importance. If you're going to write this story, what's the first judgment, the first value you would give this news story? Put them up as soon as you write, write them down. We've got proximity. Yeah, it happened here, didn't it? If power was out in Roanoke, would we care? No. Well, we should care a little bit, but we won't care much. Prominence and proximity. Interesting. Why would you think prominence would have something to do with it? I think we're, we're missing prominence. Prominence is more about it happening to somebody who is... Uh, somebody or some place. Right. That somebody is, or some place. That is well so known. prominence would go into fact if the governor's mansion lost power. That would be a prominent story. Impact and conflict. I like those. Impact and proximity. I would probably impact and proximity too, and conflict. You can put them down now. Yeah, I would go with either, any of those. And see, that's the thing about news. Depending on how you're approaching it, it could go in a lot of different directions as far as the way you pull out your story. And the direction it goes is going to really depend on who your audience is, okay? And how are you delivering the news? So. Write down now the top three ways that you get news on your, on your whiteboard. And rank them, one, two, three. The top three ways that you receive your news. Because I'm going to tell you, when I was a kid, we received news a lot differently than the way you receive news now. It was by pigeon. No, it wasn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, by stone tablet. All right, a news app, number one here. Internet, TV, radio, and phone, TV, radio, online. online, social media, online, TV, social media, television, internet, internet, TV, and phone, TV, online, and paper. Okay, very good. You can put them down. So you see where we're going with this. Now social media is the big newscaster, which means every one of you is a journalist. Because when you post something, Somebody might read that, and it becomes newsworthy. As a matter of fact, think about how many stories build up steam from online. Think about how many, say, musical artists become popular, not because of their record deal, not because of them playing live, but their YouTube uh, presence or their presence online. And so knowing who our audience is also is going to dictate what kind of story and what kind of angle we're going for. So let's talk about the Highland Springs 3 P, which, by the way, is something that I don't think has been done in a really long time, where a school for three years in a row has won the state championship. What is the number one news judgment for that? And while there's a couple different answers here, what I'm interested in finding out is what you think. What angle would you take with that story? 
So depending on what you put down as your news judgment, that is where you would go as far as um, the angle of your story. Put them up when you got them. Actually, put them back down. I want a minimum of two news values. Minimum of two news values. And the reason why is proximity is the given here. We know that this is news because of it being local, that it happened to the school that is in Henrico County, you know, that it happened to. But we got proximity and human interest. And you can get, there were so many stories of human interest when it went to this. The story about how the coach is turning young men, uh, you know, young boys into men, and, uh, and what it really means to have three in a row. So I think human interest is a great thing. Prominence, who's prominent here? Okay, yeah, and at this point, probably Coach Johnson is a prominent figure. Proximity and conflict. How do you count, where are you going to go with conflict? Yeah, and how about even the tale of two halves of this game? First half, what was it, like 33 to 6? You know, Holland Springs was winning, and then the, te the other team stormed back, and, and while I didn't ever think it was ever in real danger, all of a sudden you started thinking, hey, could they possibly come back and, and do this? Uh, Human interest, prominence, proximity, proximity and impact. How's it impactful? Okay, so that, that's really some other things. That's really human interest. But it does have some impact because now people might want to move more into this area to play football for Highland Springs. Kids might go to the specialty center at Highland Springs for the chance to play football here. So uh, it can be impactful uh, to the community also. So uh, the, 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 once again, the big question is, who is our audience and how are they getting news? Now, did anybody follow the game on social media? Yeah, they had it. They had the play-by-play -play and all the full right there on social media. They were Facebooking live the entire game. Uh, so other things that you need to know about the audience for a story uh, might be what they're interested in. Okay, say for example, you live on a coastal town. What do you think your audience is going to be in more interested in? Surfing, I heard. What else? Uh, they're probably more into the weather and how things are going to run there. Anybody else? So knowing who you are and what they're interested, how much time they're going to spend on news. So that's the next thing I want you to write down. Be honest. How much time do you spend looking at news? Do it in minutes, because I know it's not hours. Write down honestly how much time you spend. On average, each day. On average. 20 minutes? That sounds fair. Five minutes? I believe it. 30 minutes? Eh. 20 minutes? 40 minutes? That's a lot. 10 minutes? 30 minutes? Now I just feel like 14, lying. not 13 or, or 15. Okay, so what is that really, roughly 30 minutes, so what does that say about our news habits? Anybody? Say it again. No, I heard that. that but I heard the, the answer I was looking for. Go ahead, say it again. Yeah, the interest level of today's observer is a lot less than what it used to be. I'm telling you, back in the day, we'd sit with a newspaper, spend two, three hours reading the newspaper. That's something that we blocked off doing. But now there's so much competition with news that you have to kind of, you know, fight to get, you know, your time in. So because of our limited interest, write down one thing that you think we have to do as journalists to make our news get to our audience. One thing that we might not have done 25 years ago that a journalist today has to do to be able to reach their audience and get the news to them. Because let's face it, the news is not news unless somebody hears it. So what do you think we have to do? Any ideas? Write them down as soon as you get done. Let me see what you got. Produce it, but how? Produce it how? OK, not really what I'm looking for, but that's close. Impact of the story, that's good. Booms. Uh, Anthony writes down interesting headlines. we got to figure out a way to grab them in. Post it on social media. That's where I was wanting to go with this. 
Uh, be personal also, I think that's important. But doing cross-promotion of news, which is why a journalist today has to be able to deliver news on many different platforms. For example, you know, not only are, is, is a story that we do here in class going to go on the radio, we might have to write it so it could be on our website. We might want to post it to our Twitter account you know, and our uh, Instagram account, which we have people who are following us all these different platforms for the same news story. All right, last news story I want to talk about today is, uh, is the Seattle Seahawk player that tried to enter the stands after the fan threw a drink on him. So first of all, I want you to first of all tell me whether this is a story that is newsworthy and then I want you to briefly write down why you might be interested in a story like this. And by the way, the news judgment, there's, there's, there's two definite ones. Let me see if you could write those down also. And there are so, ones you can rule out. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do again. First of all, yes or no, is this a news story? Then secondly, um, uh, what makes this news? What are the two news judgments uh, that actually make this uh, a news story? Okay. Let's, let's just go there for right now. He says, yes, prominence and conflict. Conflicts and impact. How, does that, how do you think that impacts? I like that. Yeah, I wouldn't have... Actually, I didn't even think of that at the beginning. So he says how the player's behavior might impact you maybe further watching that team, following that team. Let's face it, the NFL getting a lot of black eyes this year. This certainly isn't helping. Is it a news story? Yes. Conflict and prominence. Those are the two major reasons. But why is it a news story? Yes, conflict and prominence. It's, uh, I'm interested because of what happened to the player. What did happen to the player? Yeah. What do you think is going to happen to the player? Suspended, fined, something like that? That's good. So uh, anybody else, why do you think, uh, why are you interested in that news story? Well, yeah, where is, where is that boundary between player and fan? But then again, if you pay for your ticket, are, are you entitled to throw a drink on a player as they're walking in? Mm -hmm. And how would you react if you were at, just say, walking to your job. Anybody here got a part-time job? All right, so where do you work at? Where do you work at? Yeah. Huh? Okay, so you're going to Popeye's, and I'm standing there on the side. I'm not really liking the, the chicken I'm getting, and I toss my drink on you. What happens then? I think you're coming after me. I think but, it depends on the drink. Yeah, that's true. But in this point, in this instant, you know, the NFL is saying, hey, you can't go into the stands and fight. Anybody remember a couple years ago? Maybe it was more than a couple years ago. The basketball fight that started up. Who was, uh, who was the basketball player? Huh? Yeah, yeah, Meta World Peace. Yeah. Some peace, huh? Uh, <laughs> I still call him Ron Artest. I don't want to call him Middle World Peace. But, I mean, if you think about that, I mean, he got in all sorts of trouble for getting in the stands. Because if a player is going to break that boundary, then all sorts of anarchy is going to go on. So, if you were going to write a news story about this, what kind of angle do you think you would take? Anybody? What, what do you think? How about the angle of fans provoking players? I mean, and, and what and where do they when do they cross the line? Throwing the, Throwing the drink across the line. So I could say something about your mom, and that'd be okay. No, no it wouldn't, would it? Just because you pay for a ticket to, and and he's making the millions of dollars, does that give you the right to say whatever you want? Can you call him a lousy football player? Is that okay then? Yeah. How far can you go with it? Don't tell me. You can go very far with it. <laughs> so I think that I think the important thing here is to figure out what kind of story that your audience wants and be able to work your way towards that, that angle to it. Thanks for joining the students of Radio Broadcasting and Journalism here at the ACE Center at Holland Springs, and we'll see you next time.